Rocket Lab. It's been an up and down month, but we've got major updates, my thoughts, and where I can see the stock going next. So let's talk. So I thought I'd jump on just to elaborate on the major updates, give you some of my thoughts around Rocket Lab, and then where I can see the stock going next. This is a new sort of project I'm starting, and I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to start speaking about my stocks on a weekly roundup, as well as giving the news every single day. So if you want a weekly roundup on Rocket Lab, make sure to tell me in the comments, just so I don't forget about the stock. But what we're going to do today, we're going to jump straight into it. We're going to dive in to all the major updates. I'm going to speak about what I feel about these and where I can see the stock going. And then I have a surprise for you at the end. But let's get down to business. So before you click off, I know I've done a deep dive on the likes of the Minoric deal. Now, this is going to be a whistle stop tour through all the major updates, and I'm just going to elaborate on them as we go through. But if you want to see the in-depth analysis, make sure to check out them videos that we've dropped. But looking at this on March 11th, Rocket Lab announced a non-binding agreement to acquire Minoric. And that deal was around 75 million. Now, this is really shrewd business from Rocket Lab because even though Minoric is not performing the best, shall we say, at the moment, it has invested at least 300 million into the company. So Rocket Lab are more or less picking up a steal here. So what Minoric is, is a leading provider of laser communications for air, space and mobile applications. And as part of the latest strategic step towards their own future constellation as an end-to-end -end space company. So what we can see from this here is another major step in allowing them to own their own constellation. However, I think this is more for how they can build constellations for other companies. Therefore, they will be end-to-end. -end. However, it's not Rocket Lab completely owning the constellation. But let me know if you disagree. So what these laser communications basically are, now I am not a rocket engineer, so I'm going to break it down from my understanding. There's going to be four nodes, one on each side of the spacecraft. Now really what these are going to do, they're going to communicate with the other satellites in the constellations, basically telling you the distance between them. But that is very, very basic. And guys, I know some of the engineers are going to absolutely butcher me with this analogy. However, just to make it easy for the guys, this is more or less what these laser communications do. So then jumping across, we then done a nice video on the top five holders of Rocket Lab. And I'm not going to dive into them either. But what I found most interesting was the likes of Peter Beck still owns 10.58% of the company. Now, if he sold it at the value at the time of recording of $19, that still would have been around a billion dollars. The fact that Pete has been able to hold on to 10.58% of the company did surprise me a little bit. Just because, looking at it, he is the second biggest holder if you take retail out of it when it comes to Rocket Lab. And I just would have thought there would have been more investment firms with a higher position. Look, I wasn't surprised to see BlackRock or Vanguard there. I've let people know my thoughts on both of these. They more or less have money and fingers in every pie. I'm not too bullish when I see them about. However, I am quite bearish when I don't see them holding a particular stock. Look, for any of you Rocket Lab guys, BlackRock is a big investor in Virgin Galactic. So let that tell you the story. But the biggest takeaway from this video I found was... Rocket Lab's retail base holds around 142.5 million shares, and that's about 28.6% of the company. But guys, do retail actually move the market? Well, according to this figure, it wouldn't surprise me if it actually does. What I did find interesting, this is just a side note, and I will get back onto the video, but I did ask uh, how many retail shares has the community combined of Vince's bullish Dave G investing, Matt Money, Scotto, and us, just because it'd be quite interesting to see out of that 142 million shares, if the retail investors in Rocket Lab are staying up to date 
with the likes of YouTube, or is this more or less a subsection of the retail base? But moving on, we then had on March 12th, and this is when the news really started ramping up, they were selected by Airbus to provide 200 of the high-efficiency space-grade solar panels to power the extension of their 101 web lower Earth orbit satellite constellations for Utilsat Group. Now, I couldn't find any information on how much this deal is worth. However, 200 solar panels, I would say it is pretty substantial. And if any of you know, please let me know in the comments. They said that the solar panels would provide low Earth orbit cancellation with 80 kilowatts of power, and that would be enough to power 16 Hubble-sized telescopes, which is quite an interesting fact. <laughs> so then jumping across, the next day, they released their next-generation software for next-gen missions. And what we'll do, we'll dive straight into comparing both the intermission and the max cancellation software suites. So jumping into Rocket Lab, we can see a live counter they have up, and they have about 256 years to date of space data. So that is when the satellites go up to space, combine it together, how much time they have spent in space. So really, this is what the software is going to analyze. Look, I am no genius when it comes to reading the likes of flight data. So some of you might want to visit the website and have a look at this. But if we compare the two, so looking at the Max FSW, it's going to be industry-leading commercial flight software platform. They've had 80 plus successful across diverse missions. It's going to be versatile and it's designed with all spacecraft in mind and easily configurable and extendable. It's also going to be secure and hardened against Sparta and RMF cyber controls. If you want me to explain that, you're in the wrong channel because I haven't a clue what these two are. And then looking at the intermission, the ground operations, the cancellation ready C3 with automation, scheduling, flight dynamics, and antenna control. And that's going to be scalable, highly scalable microservices architecture, easy API integration, on-prem or cloud deployments. And again, that is going to be secure that so supports encryption management, user authentication, and RBAC. Now look, I'm not a genius when it comes to what these actually do. And to be fair, do I really care? Not really. I'm more interested in how much revenue it's going to generate Rocket Lab. But this again stops Rocket Lab from having to subcontract the likes of software. They now again are becoming more vertically integrated. So that's what makes me extremely bullish on the company. Now, before I get into the next one, there was a thought shared by one of the guys on X. So if you compare the market cap of SpaceX, which is around 300 billion or so, that does not change because they're private. So their company just keeps getting better and better and people's look towards that company does not change. However, we've dropped to about, what, 8 billion market cap. And people seem to be not as bullish on the company. I'm not going to say they're bearish, but they're not backing them as much as they used to. Look, Rocket Lab is just getting better and better. And as you've seen by the news so far, this is all in the space of three days this news came out. But then we can head over. We've had three launches in two weeks, and that was all from one launch site. So on March 15th, we had the IQPS. On March 18th, we had Kinesis. And then we had Aurora Tech on the 27th of March. But what I found most interesting in this is while watching the launch, they actually gave more information about Haste itself. Now, I am extremely bullish on Haste and always have been. But they more or less came out and said it's more government-backed than we actually already anticipated it was more or less led by discussions with the government and that's why they decided to launch the hypersonic accelerator suborbital test electron that's a mouthful 
So then jumping across, this was one of the biggest bits of news of the month. And we'll get straight into it. So we then had Neutron selected for the on-ramp to the US Space Force's 5.6 billion national security space launch program. Now, they're one of five providers that have went for this tranche one. But if we think about this, if Neutron can pull a deal like this over the line, how big of a bump did we get with that 515 million contract? This is 10 times the size of that. But I've highlighted a few key points in this. So the IDIQ contract has a five-year ordering period that will run through to June 29 with a maximum of 5.6 billion. So what's interesting about that is the maximum is 5.6 billion. So it doesn't actually state that the whole contract is for definite 5.6 million. And if anyone is aware, is it going to be broken down to different subcontractors? Please let me know. So why is Rocket Lab in contention for this? So they've had 63 Electron launches to date, and they're only one of two US launch providers to have launched multiple payloads to orbit so far in 2025. And you can guess who the other one is. Yes, it's SpaceX. So Neutron is debuted to launch from Launch Complex 3 in Wallops Island, Virginia. And it will be the first launch vehicle to support the NSSL program from that region. Which, is it going to make a difference? I don't really believe so. As one of the five launch providers selected for the Department of Defense program, eligibility for the NSSL Lane 1 includes stringent requirements that aim to develop a diversified, competitive, and reliable domestic launch base to provide launch services for its highest priority national security missions. The program plans to award a minimum of 30 missions within its contract period through to 2029. Now, imagine that. 30 neutron launches. We're talking about a government contract for this. This is not where your customer could just pull out. The government contracts are more or less bang on. So then it has a potential with an extension through to 2034, which we discussed earlier. As part of the on-ramp to the NSSL program, Rocket Lab receives a 5 million task order to perform capabilities assessment that demonstrates the company's tailored approach to mission assurance for launches awarded through the NSSL program. And look, that 5 million is probably going to be spent doing this task. So... Look, it's good to get a bit of cash in the box, but I think it's in for a penny, in for a pound. So then on that same day, we then got a double down from Rocket Lab, which should make even the most bearish bullish on Rocket Lab. So they've doubled down on March 27th to say Neutron's debut launch is still scheduled to take place in the second half of 2025 and will be the first rocket to support the NSSL program from Wallops Island, Virginia. I believe it could be November time. However, if they do push it back to early 2026, is it going to make much of a difference? I don't honestly believe so. Look, when we're talking about investing in the company over 20, 30, 40 years, is three months really going to make a difference? I prefer them to hone in and perfect their systems to give the best chance for a successful first mission than to rush it just for investor sentiment and the mission fail and then don't get the likes of a contract like this. So then that sort of brings us up to date as of today. But then do you want to hear a little bit more about me as a creator? Well, I did release a video that I've got so much great feedback from the guys that I cannot thank enough. This is the story about my dad. I'm not going to get into it, but if you want to check that out, I'm going to drop that in the video there. And we're currently at 2.03 thousand subscribers. So if you haven't, make sure to join for daily Rocket Lab content.